What's up guys? Hope you enjoyed my last video. So there we discussed how to create a simple microservice using Spring Boot and Spring Cloud, right? So today we are going to go one more step further and what is that? We are going to discuss about the actuator. So if you remember in the last video, we added a dependency called actuator starter dependency, right? So what that dependency does is, so this is the where if you already familiar with the Spring one point, Spring Boot one point some X version and the Spring two point, uh, what we are going to discuss here, there is a there are differences. So what the simply actuate endpoint does is, when you just put this actuate endpoint actuate dependency into your project, what that does is it gives you some uh, predefined endpoints, which is very useful health endpoint environment. Uh, configuration and beans you can get tons of information from that but then the way they handle it little bit different from a spring 2 point uh, spring boot 2 point uh, x other 2 point some other versions right so in our project so we can see here we have this dependency already and project uh, I, I'm going to st I start the project right so now if I go here so if it is a 1.0 now let's say if it's a hello it's working if it's a 1.0, if you put this health endpoint here, it just gives you some value. But you can see here, it doesn't give any value for us, right? Reason is the URL path little bit different here. So you need to put actuator in your URL path. So now it says up. So if you call something like info, right? So it, it just, it give you some empty, empty response. But if you call something like a beans, right? So now it's say not found. The reason is with the Spring 2.0 uh, onwards, Spring Boot 2.0 onwards, we don't give this, we don't expose these uh, endpoints automatically, right? So if you need those endpoints, you need to manually expose those in your project, right? So how we can do that? Remember last time we created a property file here. So in this property file, we need to tell Hey, go ahead and enable these endpoints for us on actuator, right? So, but you can give the list of endpoints you need, but instead of that, I'm going to uh, enable everything here. How we can do that? You can give here management, management dot endpoint dot web exposure include, right? So you can say, hey, include all endpoints for me, right? So now I'm going to uh, restart the service. Load my REST client and now it's working, right? So now being endpoint is working, right? So now if I try some other endpoints, uh, something like uh, metrics, right? So it tells you all the possible metrics you can take from the service, right? So let's take uh, one JVM dot memory max. Right, so you slash here JVM memory max. Right, so you can see uh, those values. So like that, you can get tons of information. You can get the uh, about the um, uh, GC GC uh, poses and also tons of information. Right, for example, not only that, you can take even thread dump from here. Thread dump. Right, but keep in mind, don't try to do this in the production. Right, this is not something recommended to do, but you can get a thread dump here, right? If I think you hope you know what the thread dump is, right? If you don't know, just just a little bit Google. Thread dump is mean, so this momently state of the all the threads were running on your uh, application. Also, not only that, you can get a heap dump from here. So yeah, see, it's asking to uh, save into a file. So this is the one of the place the postman doesn't work, right? If you try this endpoint with the postman, postman is going to hang and like maybe five minutes later, it's going to freeze, right? So, but this insomnia tool is really good and it's really robust to this type of scenarios. Okay, anyway, so I, I'm not going to take you through all the endpoints which actually exposed because you can find this in Google and you can try all those. And also you can uh, enable or disable uh, endpoints, uh, whatever you need from here, right? So what I'm going to show you how we can create our own actuator endpoints. If we need to do something, let's say for example, we need to change the log level uh, dynamically, right? Or we need to uh, enable or disable certain features dynamically. 
so if you want to do something like that how we can do it okay so this is a little bit different than the way uh, worked with the uh, uh, actuator one point versions which is a spring boot one point version so a uh, so few new annotations added and things a little bit uh, different here now let's see how we can have our own actuator endpoint what does this mean we can have our own endpoint in the actuator uh, service so what that does is we can change certain values runtime or we can get values we can we can manipulate we can do anything with that right so let's take a scenario like this so let's say uh, you have a service right so with this service you have a in your service you have few levels level 1 to level 5 right and those level you have a threshold value right you should be able to read those threshold value and set those threshold value dynamically so let's see how we can do this something like that right so let's say we call this a staging right so what i'm going to do here i'm going to add new class call stage endpoint right so this can be anything right so to match our scenario we're going to take like this so here what i'm going to do is um static So now we have a stage class right which has an int value so keep hold the value for this stage or threshold value and we have one constructor which we can take the uh, threshold value and uh, return a new stage right constructor because every stage has to have a value and you have a basic getters and setters so here what i'm going to do is i'm going to keep a map um, key is a string and value is a stage right so stages equal new concurrent hash map okay so for th for this i'm going to get stages right so public Okay, now we have three methods, right? So three, three method skeletons. One is a map, one is a get all stages. So what that does is it return all the stages what we have. And the second one is a get stage, which mean like take the stage uh, stage name and return the stage uh, value and stage object. And the second one is set the stage value, right? So these are the new uh, endpoints what we have. So first we need to make this as a component, right? So you know uh, in a spring when you annotate something with a component it create a bean right so either e either you can annotate with the component annotation or service annotation or repository annotation because service and repository extend from the component so no matter which annotation you use it create a bean for you also you can use a bean and there is a other way you can call an endpoint right so the moment you use the component which is a bean and along with the endpoint annotation automatically this service will expose via the web flux or any any jmx uh, as jmx endpoints right so here we have to give the id right so id means so this is the one we use after actuator your host name slash actuator slash what right so i'm going to use as a stages right so this can be anything so let's say stage okay so this can be anything right so it doesn't matter and here so i'm going to say this is a uh, read operation right so read operation mean http get call will come and map here so this is also read operation right so but this is write operation also you can use a delete operation that's also uh, valid right so here you don't need any parameter you have to return everything but here you need a name so we use something called selector right so what the selector does is it tells okay 
I need to uh, operate this based on this value select a string name right so I need a name to return this so what I'm going to do is return stages dot get name right so here I need to add this to the uh, add this to my um, stages so what I'm going to do is for that also I need a selector so selector is a string name and I need a stage right so now this is the right operation so here what we need to do is we need to add this to map right stages dot put my name and stage right so this is simple very clear right so you have a component annotation and you have endpoint I will explain this again and read operation read operation the right operation if you want you can write the delete operation as well it's nothing different right so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, run this and now my actuator slash stage that's my endpoint right so what I'm going to do here I go to my uh, rest client and actuator slash stage right so now what this does is this is a get operation right so get operation is goes here right I, I'm not sending any selector so it go to here it map it automatically with the get operation right so now it's empty because obviously we haven't put anything so now I'm going to use the right operation right put something into uh, this map okay so this is a little bit different so what what we have to do is in the URL itself you need to give this key right whatever you give in here name right so let's say name is st001 right so now uh, let's 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 create a new request for this okay so let's get a new request for this so because this is a post request save stage right so my body is uh, json right so i'm going to use json body and this is my url right st001 right see this one so here i'm asking two parameters right so name and the stage okay so here i can tell okay name st001 so then I'm going to say, hey, my stage is, it should be a, a, some integer value, let's say uh, 100. Okay, so this is my value, right? So now I'm going to execute this. So now it tells me bad request, right? So parameter mapping failure. So this is a little bit important, right? Because this is, some people identify this as a bug, but this is not a bug at all, right? So this is not a bug. So this is how you should handle this uh, value. But without directly fixing this, uh, I'll show you uh, what's happening here. So you can see here we just passing int value here, right? So but here we are expecting stage object, which is a co complex object. So let's try to see pass just a pass object from here, right? So we can pass object, and here we can say hey value. That is a parameter and is 100 now, right? So instead of directly passing an int value, now we are passing object because stage is object, it's, it's just a one parameter. So now when I execute this, it tells me a different error. It's a JSON parser. This is a one mistake a lot of people does, right? So do not ignore the messages. Right, just read the messages. Someone in like you put a lot of effort to give this message to you. Just read it. Just for to give this message, you format it, give them enough information. They put a lot of effort on that. So read it. So it tells you. So uh, cannot deserialize instance of Java dot lang dot string out of start object. That means it's expecting a string, but it's trying to figure it out whether. Uh, how I can produce a string from this you can't right so see we, let's see our theory is right so for, for a moment I'm going to change this to 
for a moment I'm going to change this to string. I'm going to take it back, don't worry. Right? So I'm going to change this to string. Okay. So now I'm going to create a constructor for this and also I'm going to create a getters and setters for this. Right? So now this is fine. So now I didn't change anything here, I just changed the in to the string. Right? So now instead of passing 100 like this here, I'm going to pass 100 as a string here. Okay? See whether it's working. Um, it still it says parameter mapping failure. We'll see what we missed here. Looks ah, okay. I didn't restart it. Okay. Though I change it, I didn't restart it. Okay. So okay, it's it's done. So now it worked, right? So let's go here and fetch state. Now you can see the value is here. So let me to let me to push other value. Say 200 is the 0, 02. 0, 2. So now the both values are there. So that means it worked with the string. But we can do this everything convert to string, right? We need to in, be in to be int, right? The so boolean to be boolean. We can do this. Okay. Uh, there's something you can do here. So what you can do is I'm going to revert this back to int. Uh, what we had okay right so now this is what we had and now if I restart this it will give me an error okay so because the reason is this endpoint cannot identify your complex data type so what you can do is here so if you want to preserve the int behavior you can go here and just new stage and you can pass the stage here right so you can convert this to int right so now i'm taking int but internally i create my complex object and now i pass it back right with this way you can take any number of variables right so we'll see i just uh, run my program and i come back here in the post request I'm going to execute this okay seems it's good and I come back here so now my value is there as an int form not like last time now it is as an int form so now I'm not I'm not going to pass any selector here and I'm going to execute this so now it will tell you post method is not allowed right so why because here there is no post signature right so there is no post signature without a selector you must pass the selector selector always goes in um, in the URL path, right? So I think uh, now we are clear how this uh, working and how you can extend uh, these uh, actuator endpoints. So we can do a lot of things with this. For example, you can dynamically change your configurations. You can dynamically change your log level, right? So probably we can do in our the real uh, assignment, and you can do a lot of things with this. Okay. So what is next? So what we are going to do is we are going to build complete projects with you, right? So um, with everything, maybe rent a car system, maybe some uh, cashier system, maybe, okay. So whatever, we are going to build complete project with you. So end of this course, you will have a complete production ready project where you can deploy to AWS and we are going to show you, right, how to deploy to AWS and how to get things work done, right. Okay, so stay in touch, uh, like on my Facebook and uh, follow me on uh, Instagram and the Twitter and also subscribe to my YouTube channel right now and click on the bell sign. Don't forget it because then you, don't, you won't miss any video. I promise you I'm going to continuously upload this course until we go to the end. Then see you on the next video. Till that, take care. Have a nice time.